Good morning, everyone, and welcome to day two of the How to Do Business with California State Government webinar series, the Certification Workshop. For those of you who are new, my name is Jolene Graham, and I am joined here by my coworker, Matt Zwire. We are both business outreach liaisons for the California Department of General Services, and we specifically work in the Office of Small Business and DVBE Services, or OSDS, as we like to refer to it. There are a few things that you're going to need handy um, if you're planning on registering right now, like your tax identification number, website URL, business and mailing address, as well as your email address and phone number. Um, like yesterday, Matt is going to guide you through this webinar, and after each section, we will take a break for a question and answer portion. Um, when it comes to any questions that you're going to have, please use the chat feature. Um, I'm going to be monitoring them as they come in. Um, there are a lot of people on this webinar right now, so I'm going to monitor your questions as best as I can. Um, at the end of this webinar, if you feel like your question hasn't been answered, please email custserve at dgs.ca.gov. That's C-U-S-T-S-E-R-V at dgs.ca.gov. And I'll go ahead and drop that email address into the chat as well. Um, we have one of our staff members monitoring that email inbox and we should get back to you within a day or so. Um, Matt and I also want to extend a thank you to Caltrans and CPM Logistics for making this webinar happen. Um, also, this webinar is being recorded and you guys will get the link here within a few days. Um, all right, Matt, let's get certified. All right, let's go ahead and get your businesses registered on CaliPerk here. Thank you so much, Jolene. Um, what you see here, this list is a simple list of the most critical information that you're going to need uh, to complete this registration process. There is additional information um, that you're going to, we'll, we'll, we'll cross that when we get there. Um, so in terms of where we're starting, we are starting on Cal e Procure. Uh, so I want all of you to go to www.caleprocure.ca.gov. Um, I'll uh, give you a moment to kind of pull up your web browser and, and get that open. It should work in any web browser. Um, I, personally, I use Google Chrome. That's just what works best for me, but you can use whatever you want. Um, so I'm actually going to hop over to Cali Procure right now, uh, and, and I'm going to do this whole process with you live. Um, so this is what you should see. If you went to the right website, you should see exactly what I'm looking at now. You might see a little message up at the top about the coronavirus. Uh, you can go ahead and close that. We don't need to be looking at that right now. Um, there's a, a lot of different stuff going on on this page. Um, don't need to worry about most of it right now. This should look familiar from yesterday's course. We actually went here a couple of times yesterday to show you Cali Procure. Uh, but the first place that we're gonna go is in the top right corner where it says login slash register. Um, so hopefully you've all been able to get to that web page. We're going to go ahead and click login slash register. Um, and this is the page that we're going to land on. Uh, it's basically like creating an account. I know we all have a million accounts for all the different things in our lives, um, but we're going to ask you to make one more account. Um, and don't worry about your username or your password right now. You don't need to know that. Um, this is a disclaimer. You can read it if you really want to. Um, and there's two options here, new bidder registration and existing supplier registration. Um, we're going to be clicking new bidder registration. The other option only applies in very specific, specific circumstances that probably don't apply to any of you. So uh, I want you to go ahead and click New Bidder Registration. Give Cali Procure a minute or two to load. Um, it, it can take a little bit of time. Um, and as you can see, the, the message up at the top about COVID-19 came back up. We can close that if we want to. Um, this, uh, while this is loading, this registration process is broken down into five steps. Each of the steps is going to ask us for different pieces of information. So we're going to kind of move through um, just 
in the order that it asks us to input that information. Some of it is required and some of it is optional. I will highlight that when we get to each piece of information. Um, if you do not have a particular piece of information on hand that is essential, you won't be able to move forward with the registration process. Um, you can still stay on this webinar and listen to us and you kind of hear us talk about the process. Most of it is pretty straightforward. There are a couple spots where we're going to give some more lengthy explanation. It's, it's a spot where we find businesses get stuck often. So even if you can't, you know, maybe you don't have your tax identification number with you, um, but you know, we invite you to still stay with us. Uh, you'll, you'll get useful information. So here we are. We're on the very first uh, part of the bidder registration, because ultimately that's what you're going to become, a bidder on state contracts. And you can see we're on step one of setting up your company's profile. Uh, so the first thing is going to be tax identification number. Um, it's going to ask you what type of tax identification number you are using. Um, hopefully you know this. Uh, if you are a sole proprietorship, if that's your business, which basically means you as a person are your company and your company is not a separate tax entity, uh, the tax identification number is actually going to be your personal social security number. But if your company is its own tax entity, for instance, a limited liability company, a partnership or some kind of incorporated status, then it is going to have its own tax identification number uh, that's called a federal employer identification number or FEIN. Um, so go ahead and select whichever option applies to you. Um, disclaimer, I am going to be setting up a fake company. I'm not doing an actual company of mine. Uh, so the information you see me typing in is, is going to be fictional. Um, and I'm, I'm picking social security number. Um, just because I want to. My pretend company is going to be a sole proprietorship that I own. Now enter your company name. So your company name, this needs to be your legal business name, um, not your do business as name. That is something that is separate. Um, it's very common for companies to have a legal business name that is you know, the name that's on the tax forms, and then they have a, a name that they actually use when they do business. Um, so, um, Name of my company called Z Consulting. Um, it's because my last name is Zwire and I have a consulting firm. Um, and then over here in this field, we're going to actually enter the tax identification number. Again, I am making this up. Um, if you type in your tax identification number and you actually hit next to move on to the next process, um, the system is going to check to see whether or not that tax identification number is already in the system. Um, so uh, sometimes businesses register and then like a year or two goes by and they totally forgot they registered. And then they come here again and they, and they try to re-register and the system says, no, you already have an account. Um, if that ends up happening for you, it's not the end of the world. Um, you'll want to follow the instructions to basically reclaim your username and password. Um, it's an automated system that, that you can do, just like when we forget our passwords for all these different accounts that we have, um, and you can go ahead and reclaim that. Um, URL, this is the website. You can tell this is not a required field. The required fields have red asterisks next to them, like the first three are, but this one is not. Um, I don't have a website, so I'm, I'm not going to put a new URL. Um, Generally though, I recommend your company has a website. Uh, in this day and age, we all expect to be able to go online and read about or learn about any company that we're gonna buy a good or a service from, particularly in the state of California. Um, so you, you need to have some sort of presence online. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. System does its check. The number I put in is fine. There's no duplicates, anything like that. And now we're onto the second portion um, which is enter primary jest. Before we dive into this, we're going to stop for our first set of questions. Jolene, what questions do we have? Hey, Matt, we have a question here. Somebody wants to know what happens if they input the wrong number. So let's say they get through and they put in the wrong social security number or the wrong FEIN number, but the system still lets them move to the next because there's no duplicate. What happens then? 
So uh, the account is going to be under the wrong, it's gonna have the wrong information. Um, what I would say you do at that point is uh, go back and um, create a different account. All righty, thank you. Yeah. Um, so we're on to entering primary address information. Now this is addressed for the business, not for you as a person. Um, I realize if you operate your business out of your own home, then yes, the, is the, the address for the business is the same as the address for you as a person. Um, but we'll just go ahead and enter an address. Um, those of you wondering, this is not my home address. This is my work address. So um, you're welcome to come by my work address if you want. It's actually the Ziggurat building in West Sacramento, the big pyramid next to the river. Um, We'll put an address, city, the postal code is 95605, and state. We can do address. If, uh, you can also do a drop down, um, although you should all have the state of California since we're all supposed to be California small businesses. Um, if you have a different uh, billing address than physical address, you can check these boxes and input an additional address. Um, but remember, uh, this address that we list should be the headquarters of your company. Um, and since, you know, after, after we get registered, the goal is to get certified, uh, the headquarters of your company need to be based in California. So you, you may have the headquarters here, and that's this address, but maybe your billing is somewhere else, you know, diff somewhere else in the state, or maybe it's in a, in a different state. That's entirely possible. Um, so we have filled out all the required fields, um, and now we can hit next. All right, real quick, any questions about cons that, that, that address information? No questions for that section, Matt, thank you. Okay, good. All right, next is adding contact info. So you do have to add at least one contact person that's gonna be associated with the account. You click add contact, um, and this is gonna be the primary one. This is most likely gonna be you. If you're the owner of the company, probably a good idea for it to be you. If you are an employee of the company and you have been tasked with doing this, um, put yourself for now, unless you really think that the owner would like to be listed here as the primary contact. Um, I'll go ahead and put my name in. Title, I'm a business outreach liaison. All right, um, so you can see I've added the core information. I decided to put my title there, even though it's not required. You can add more information like mobile number, fax number, uh, contact type. So if this is, um, you know, if, if your role is specific to any of these, then, you know, if you work in sales, then perhaps sales or, or services. Um, so uh, there's one piece of information on here that is very critical, and that's the last field, that is requested user ID. Um, so like a lot of the accounts we have in life, are, are, there's a user ID and there's a password. And those are the two pieces of information we use to access our account. The user ID is often our email address, just by default. And then the password is whatever we choose. This account is gonna be different. You're actually gonna make up a user ID. It can, it can be whatever you want. Um, it does need to follow the criteria that's described here. So um, you, it has to be uh, a user ID that does not include spaces, a semicolon, special characters, um, and is less than 30 characters in length. It gives an example of first initial dot last name. I'm gonna do the username M Dwyer. Um, it's easy for me to remember. I like it. You pick whatever username you want. It's critical that you actually write this down somewhere and remember this because you're going to need it in order to log in later. If you remember when we went to that first page before we started this registration process, there was a field to put in your user ID and a field to put in your password. So definitely want to remember that. Hit OK when you're done. All right, and it's added the contact. You can see it's the primary. It's got the phone number, my name, I can delete it if I want. Um, I could even change this. Um, and of course you can add more contact information. So for instance, if 
there's a few owners in your company or if there's several employees and you'd like for everyone to be listed as contacts, go through the exact same process and add each of those. Um, now, it's also important to know you don't have to do this right now. You can always go back and edit these contacts later. So for now, I'm gonna suggest we, we move on to the next step because the next step is kind of the most complicated. Um, and uh, then, you know, later you can actually go back and uh, edit this and, and, and add more, more, more things. So let's go ahead and hit next. All right. Uh, step four, would you like to receive CSCR bid opportunity interest notifications? Okay. You're probably asking yourself, what in the world is this? Um, what is a CSCR bid opportunity interest notification? So, hey, Matt. Um, yeah, Jolene, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. We have a couple questions coming in about the last two sections. Mm -hmm. um, so somebody would like to know if they input something different from their actual legal name. Is that okay? Uh, their personal name? Yes. Yes. So you do not have to put in your, your legal name. If there is a nickname you go by, awesome. um, you can absolutely do that. My legal first name is Matthew, not Matt, but, but I go by Matthew. Um, and I did not put in my middle name and you all don't need to know what that is. Um, <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> yes. Um, can PO boxes be accepted as a primary address? No. Okay, so it no. has to be so a physical address. It needs to be a physical address. Um, yeah, part of establishing that you are a California business is that you need to have a physical address here, not just a PO box. Um, but if you want to use a PO box for a mailing address, that's totally fine. Perfect. All righty, let's move on. Thank you. All right. So this whole, would you like to receive CSCR bid opportunity interest notifications? So let me do some explaining here. The CSCR is, is an acronym. We love our acronyms in the state. You're gonna see a lot of them. It stands for California State Contracts Register. It is where all of the public competitively bid contracts are posted. It's in here, it's on, it's on Cali Procure and I'll actually show you a little bit later. Um, and this is basically asking you, would you like to receive automatic notifications from the Cali Procure system when a contract that you could bid on gets posted? Uh, the answer is yes, absolutely yes. Um, you definitely want to receive these kinds of notifications because we would all love the world in which we sit back and every day we just get an email saying, here's a contract that you could bid on with the state of California, right? That would be wonderful. So, so click it to yes. Uh, you'll notice a whole lot more showed up on the page and this is fine. So the first section here is designating who is actually gonna get emailed by the system. Um, so this is different than your contact page, right? This is something separate from the contacts we just filled out. We can add people here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in my email address, right? Um, so, uh, when something, a bid opportunity shows up on Cali Procure, it's going to go to matthew.zwire at dgs.ca.gov. And we can add another one too. So, um, I can even put Jolene in here. Right? Um, we can, you know, we can add, we can add as many as, as, as we want. So, um, one thing that I will say in, in terms of a tip on what email address to put here, put an email address that is going to be checked frequently, um, at least on a daily basis, if not multiple times a day. Make sure it is an email address that is going to be around for a long period of time. Uh, for example, I've known companies who, they, you know, they have, they're, they're, they have a, a number of employees. They're not a huge company, but they have a number of employees and they had one of their staff go in here and set this up and the staff put their email address in. And like two weeks later, the staff left and, and went, got hired somewhere else. And all the email notifications are going to an employee who no longer works for the company. And the company spent a good year to two years not getting notifications because no one was checking the email address. So if you're a company that has a number of employees and you, I'd pick a generic email address, 
Um, if this was our unit, we would probably be using that customer service email that we told you all to use because because all of us staff check it every single day and it's not going to go away if I leave or if Joe leaves, it's still going to be there. Um, and you don't, you know, you can put a personal email address if you want to. It, the system doesn't really care. Uh, you can use any email address you want. Um, any questions about that? I know we've got more on this page, but any questions about uh, email, this email notification? Yes. Can you go back and change the email at a later date? Yep. You can change it whenever you want. Perfect. And then someone else would like to know, they have already set up their account. Um, is there a way that they can verify yes, that they selected to receive the CSCR notifications? Uh, yes. Yes, there is. So um, I can't visually show you on the screen, but I can walk, talk you through it. If you're logged in to your account and you're on the home page of Cali Procure, uh, go up into the corner where your username should display instead of login slash register. Click it. A drop down menu should appear. One of the options is manage notifications. Click that and it will take you to a page that looks almost identical to what we are looking at here. Um, you will see this option to say yes or no. You'll see these emails where you can delete them or add more of them and you'll be able to follow along with us just as we are. Perfect, Matt. Thank you so much. Great. So um, the next thing that we are going to talk about is kind of the biggest and most complicated part of setting up your profile. Um, you heard us talk about it a little bit yesterday in the webinar. Um, and it is the way that you as a company are going to describe the goods and services that you provide. Um, much like if, uh, if you have a profile on LinkedIn, you have to explain what skills you possess and what you are capable of doing. It's, it's no different. Your pr business profile on here has to have some way in which you explain, look, these are the goods and these are the services that I offer. Um, and the way that we do that is with codes, right? So what you're going to be doing is picking out a number and that number is going to have a description that describes some type of good or service that you can actually provide. Now, there are lots of different coding systems out there. The one that we use is called the United Nations Standard Products and Services Codes, or UNSPSC for short. I told you we like our acronyms in the state of California. I wasn't lying. Um, you don't really need to remember what this whole acronym stands for. I'm pretty much going to say the word codes when I'm referring to this throughout the presentation. So this is where we're going to pick the codes that describe the goods and services we would like to be notified about. Right. So if the system is going to send us emails that, that relate to what our business does, we need to be able to tell the system, this is what my business does. Um, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to search by keyword. So it's kind of like searching on a web browser. If I was to do communication work, I could type in the word communication and hit search. All right. And we're going to see a lot of different options. All right. There's a long list here. I'm going to, I'm going to explain kind of what it is that we're looking at here. Um, and, and go through all of it. So that's just one option of communication. You can see there's, this is like technical communications, satellite communications. My specialty is actually interpersonal communication and giving presentations, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, but let's see, I worked in construction. Okay, so again, we have a different list here. Um, there's a lot of different stuff. So. What I want to do is explain to you how the codes work. So you'll notice the code is here. It's eight digits long. And then here's the description. Very simple. Construction paper. Um, now, if you notice, I'm going to scroll over here and I'm going to click this little down arrow. I'm not going to click the add button yet, but I'm going to click the down arrow. All right. And you see there are actually four codes displayed here. This one at the very top starts off with a 14 followed by six zeros and it's paper materials and products. That's a very broad description. 
right? Paper materials and products, very broad. Then right below it, we have another code, 14, 11, and then followed by four zeros. And this one's a little bit, a little bit narrow, it's paper products. So we've, we've narrowed from paper materials and products down to paper products. Then we drop to the third level and we've added two more digits. Now it's 14, 11, and 16. And we've gotten more specific. This is now novelty paper. And lastly, there is a fourth level. And now all the digits are specified, 14, 11, 16, 10, and that's construction paper. So what I'm highlighting is that the UNSPSC coding system is organized in a hierarchy with four levels, right? Remember how hierarchies work? Um, the higher up you are, the broader the category, the lower down you are, the more specific. It's, uh, it's like species classification. If we remember that from grade school, right? You got kingdom, phylum, class, family, order, genus, species. And if you wanna find humans, you can look under species at, at Homo sapien and you'll find us. Of course, you can look at, at, at you know, primates under the order and you'll still find humans, but you'll find like chimpanzees and gorillas and bonobos and stuff. And if, if you wanna find humans, you know, you can look at the class level mammal. Of course, you're gonna find cats and dogs, right? So you wanna be able to pick the category that's right for you. Do you want to be really broad? Do you actually want to get notified about every single contract for all paper materials and products? Or do you really just sell construction paper? Right? If you cast too broad of an umbrella and you pick a code that's way up here, you may get inundated with emails. Now, nobody wants to show up in the office on Monday morning with 900 emails in their inbox and only two are relevant. That's just a waste of time. Um, you also, you know, if you go super specific and only pick the level four all the way down here, you, you may miss out on opportunities, right? Um, so it's a bit of a balancing act. It can take a little bit of time to figure out what the right codes are. Um, our recommendation in terms of what is most effective is that you cho choose codes from level three and level four. Now, if you're wondering, well, how do, if I, what is this code at level three? Is it level four? How do I know? The numbers are all different. Um, look at the number of zeros there are at the very end. All right? If there's two zeros, like there are right here, it means you're at level three. If there's four zeros, it means you're at level two. If there are six zeros, it means you're at level one, and that's the broadest level. Um, you can pick whatever you want. Um, you do want to make sure that whatever you're picking is in the right category. For instance, um, if I was to search mice, all right, so this is mice. It is live mice, it is not a computer mouse. You wanna make sure that you're picking the right category because sometimes words mean two different things depending on their context. Um, now, if I typed mouse, there we go. This is now computer technology. Um, that's what we're looking for. So you wanna make sure, and that's why we often click this drop down arrow to see what are the categories. Am I in the right category? Because um, the words you use in your industry may also be used in other, in, in, in other industries. So you wanna make sure you have the right codes. Um, so what I encourage you to do is use this search field type in a word that describes the, the goods or services that you do. And I'd actually encourage you um, in the chat, uh, describe what it is that you do. Use one word, um, Jolene can let us know, and I'm actually gonna search on it, on it here, and, and, and we'll use it as kind of a, a, as a live example. Um, so let's see, if people are taking my suggestion, Jolene, what do we have coming in? Okay, hey, let's answer a few questions here first, mm -hmm. um, and then we can move on to that. Um, if someone already has the code, can they just enter the code in somewhere instead of having to search for it? Um, no, you need to actually search by the keyword. Um, if, uh, yeah, you, you do need to search by the keyword. If you already have the code, um, but you don't know what the description of the code is, 
um, there is another option that you can use, um, and that is to go to the UNSPSC website. Um, so you notice, you know, the coding system is by the United Nations. That's not the state of California. That's the, the international body. Uh, so if you go to UNSPSC, you just Google it, um, you'll find the, the organization right here. Um, and you can actually search the code, use this little search box, and you can search by the code itself or by the name. So if I was to type in the code that I just copied and hit search, there it is. Um, and um, then you could, you could search using the word keyboard or search using the words, uh, the words mouse cable. Um, so that's how you can do that. Perfect. Um, great okay. question. Let's go, um, let's search mold remediation. Okay. Mold remediation. Search. We're not finding anything. All right, let's see if we can try something a little bit different. Mold. Okay, here we go. We've got a bunch of results. Um, let's see. What do we have? Do we have anything on mold remediation? There's a lot of stuff here. Um, I'll say as well, I'm also a big fan of the control F feature, which is find. Um, so maybe if we type in remediation, something might come up or if it doesn't, maybe we can look at the, uh, the UNSPSC codes website or um, use your good friend Google mold remediation, see if there's some other word that could be used for that as well. Sometimes what we call things, the UNSPSC database doesn't really recognize it like that. <laughs> yes, so a couple things I'll say, this is really good to know. This search feature is not as sophisticated as Google. I know we've all kind of come to expect that everything is as sophisticated as Google, where we type anything in and Google's like, you mean this, don't you? And you're like, yeah, I do. And then it just, it finds it for us, right? We're all so used to that. Unfortunately, that is not how the system works. So it does take some time to actually figure out and find the right codes for each of us. Um, mold remediation, that is awfully specific. Um, you, most likely that sounds like you're gonna be doing an environmental, you're gonna be cleaning up a property. Um, so we might even try environmental. Um, environmental systems. Um. I will say too, if you guys ever come across something that you can't find the UNSPSC code with, reach out to us. Mm -hmm. um, it's our job to help you make your profile as strong as possible. Um, yeah. So reach out to that CustServe at dgs.ca.gov email address and we will be happy to dig in a little bit deeper and, and do some research for you guys as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, I will, um, uh, I'll, I'll actually, I'll, I guess I'll, sh I'll share the tip now um, bef before we kind of move on. Um, and I, I would like for each of you to try and find at least one code to add to your profile at this time. You can always go back and, and change them later. What I don't want is for you to get stuck here and think you have to find all the perfect codes before you're allowed to move on. Because what we really need to do is finish this registration process, right? We want to make sure we get it done, we're in the system, then we can go back and improve it. Um, so I do want to show you a trick, um, <laughs> a trick for finding the right codes. Um, now I'm not, I'm, I'm going to go to a different page. Don't navigate because I don't want you to lose this registration. Um, but we're at, I'm going I'm to show you another way to do it is to go into Cali Procure and look up a company that does what you do. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna look up another certified firm. Now, certification profiles are public. They're available to the public. Um, not your tax information or anything like that, but the name of your company, contact information, as well as describing what it is that you do. So, um, if I type in mold remediation and hit search in the keywords description, 
Let's see if the system actually finds anybody. 10 companies who do, who claim they do mold uh, remediation or at least have both of those words in it. Um, so here's something, I don't know who asked that question. You might actually know one of these companies. Um, Haven Cleaning and Restoration Inc. This is a certified small business. Uh, they work in construction. So what you can do is click on them. Uh, classifications are the UNSPSCs. That's the codes. We can click there and we can look and these are the UNSPSCs that they have decided to pick out. So it's a short kind of way to figure out what might the right codes be. These may not be right for you, but it's, it, it can be a great way to, to actually figure out maybe the right codes are here. Um, perhaps not, you know, they've got plumbing system and maintenance repair. Maybe you don't do that. You know, maybe that's not part of the mold remediation that you do. Um, but this is, this is one of the ways that you can figure it out. It's not stealing. It's not cheating. This is all public, uh, public information. Anybody can use this. Um, again, I recommend that's something you look into doing after we're finished with registration. Uh, don't, don't try and go ahead and do that now. So. Um, so let's see, for my company, let's see, I do, um, let's see, facilitation. Let's see, here we go. Focus group and public feedback meeting facilitation. Um, here we go, public relations and professional communication services. That would be fitting for my fake company, Z Consultings. I'm gonna do communication services. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. I'm, I'm willing to do all sorts of stuff. So you notice I added that and it added every single thing underneath it. Because that's how hierarchies work. If you add something up at the top, it adds every single thing underneath it. Now let's see if I just wanted to do something simple, you know, I could have added one of these down below, but I actually added the top code, which is fine. I'm okay with that. If there's any that I don't actually want to do, I can take them away. So for instance, if I don't want to do any branding, Let's see, I don't want to do any brand promotion or management service. I don't want to do that. So I check the box, delete selected, and it asks me, do I really want to delete it? Yes, I really do want to delete it. And now it's gone, right? So now I've got a bunch of codes. I've got 38 codes. Um, and then if I don't want to delete them all, I can just select all and hit delete selected. Um, all right, any, uh, any other questions about these codes before we move on? Hi, Matt. Yes, we do have a couple questions. Um, once they add a code, can they delete it? Uh, yeah, so, so that process is pretty straightforward. Just uh, on the code here, check the box, um, and then hit the delete selected button. So you can do one or multiple codes at a time. Um, so if I wanted to, you know, this, this one right here is blank. It has nothing on it. I don't want that on my profile. Let's go ahead and delete it. Yes. And now it's gone. Okay. And then one more question here. Is mm -hmm. it a good idea to only put your primary service codes or should we add all of the codes or all services that are provided? So I would add all services that are provided. Um, because I hate for you to miss out on an opportunity. Um, if you find that you are getting too many emails that are not relevant for you and it's becoming a problem, then I'd go back in and start pulling the codes out. Um, that is the approach that I would take. I would also encourage you to, you know, if, if you are considering expanding your business to provide a new service or product that you don't yet provide, and you're wondering if there is a market for it with the state of California, Add the code to your profile here, and even though you can't provide it yet, you'll get notified. And that is kind of a way for you to gauge, huh, maybe the state is buying this new particular type of product or this particular type of service, and then maybe it is worthwhile for you to expand um, and, and, and start offering that. Perfect. Okay, one more quick question here. If you add a level three code, does it also add all level four codes too? 
Uh, I believe so, it does. Let's go ahead and try that out. Uh, mediation. All right, uh, so that's also something I do. So um, this is a 9-2 code. Uh, so let's go ahead and the question was, if we add a level three, will it add the level four? All right, so we're gonna add this level three. It's a 9 2 one, one, 15, zero, zero. All right, let's scroll down and see. It did. So you'll notice I have 9, 2, 11, 15, zero, zero, which is maintenance of international uh, peace and security. Interesting. Um, and then it's got the codes underneath it. You'll notice that they go 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Um, uh, see, this is a good example of, I should really check, this is dispute mediation or, or negotiation or settlement, um, but it's under national defense. Um, now, I have done mediation and I am uh, certified to do that, but I'm not interested in national defense or international conflicts. So I'm actually going to remove those codes because they do not accurately capture what services I might want to provide. So we can just select each of these. and delete the selected ones. All right. Perfect, Matt, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, last section on here, uh, it's pretty simple compared to what we just went through, is the service areas that you want to get notified about. Um, it is done by counties, so you can either check this button for statewide services, meaning you are willing to work in the entire state of California, whether it's all the way down in San Diego or all the way up in Eureka or even Yreka, it's really up there. Um, but if not, let's say you're Southern California, you're based in the Los Angeles area and you only want to get notifications about opportunities in Southern California, that's perfectly fine. Um, just go ahead and select those counties. Um, if you're not sure, I would just hit this because I don't actually expect you to know the identifiers for each of the counties, just hit this little uh, hamburger icon and uh, you can scroll through and select what county you want. So maybe you're in Los Angeles and that's where you're willing to work. Um, or if you're up in the Sacramento area, maybe it's Sacramento County, maybe it's Yolo County. If you're in the Bay Area, it's one of the nine Bay Area counties. Um, again, you can always change this. Um, it's important to note, this is not a commitment of where you're willing to work. So if, if, you, if you put you know, San Francisco County because you're thinking, eh, maybe I'll go up to San Francisco if it's, if it's the right opportunity, um, you're not obligated to actually work there. You're, you're not ab obligated to actually respond to any sort of contract. It's entirely up to you. Um, and so for me, uh, I'm, I'm actually not willing to go to Los Angeles to, to work. That's far too, too, too far of a drive. So I'm actually gonna say Sacramento because uh, that's uh, where I am. And then let's go ahead and add another service area. So you can just click that button. It'll add another option. I'll hit the drop down menu. And then let's see, I will also work in Yolo County. It's right next to Sacramento County. Um, so I'll go ahead and add that one. And that's all I wanna work. I'm small, I wanna stay local. Um, any, any questions about service areas? Not at this moment in time, Matt, thank you. Okay, great. We'll go ahead and hit next. All right, we are at the end of it here. We're at the terms and conditions. Um, you are welcome to read these terms and conditions. Um, in fact, I encourage that you do. It covers a lot of uh, kind of basic information uh, about the state. When you have read it, uh, you can hit check this box, click to accept the terms of agreement below. Scroll down and hit submit. Now I'm not actually gonna hit submit. I don't wanna generate a fake business in here. Um, part of these terms and conditions is that you're being honest and truthful um, and this is a fake account. So I'm not actually going to hit the submit button. Um, but when you do hit the submit button, you're basically going to, um, screen's basically gonna say, you know, something along the lines of congratulations, you're gonna, you know, you've registered your business. You are going to be emailed uh, 
a link to reset your password. Because you notice we didn't set up a password at all here. So um, that primary contact that you listed, it's going to email that email address and follow those instructions to input your user ID and reset and determine your password. Um, and at that point in time, you will be registered. Uh, and that means you are allowed to bid on contracts with the state of California. Um, that's what that means. It doesn't mean you're a certified small business yet. It does not mean that you're a certified disabled veteran business enterprise or small business for the purpose of public works. That is a separate process. Um, but uh, but that, that is, is essentially what it means. Um, we have a uh, little less than 15 minutes uh, left. I want to check in and see uh, what questions do we have? Are people stuck? Um, yeah, kind of where are people? Awesome, Matt, we have a question here. Um, who is the email going to be from? The email is going to be from uh, Cali Pritchard, the exact email address that it comes from. Uh, that is actually a great question. Um, I actually don't know that, um, the specific email that it comes from. Um, let me see if I can uh, pull that up and, and see. Okay, we can come, come back to that one. Mm -hmm. um, we have a couple more questions here as how do I complete my SB and DVB application? Okay, uh, great, great question. Um, we should be able to um, show you that one. I should be able to show you that one. Um, I'll go ahead and pull that up now. Um, let me get the information for that going. So I'm actually going to exit out of this now. So uh, um, I'm actually going to, we, we have a dummy account that we use to show people this process. So I'm going to leave this um, and um, also for everyone, we're getting some answers here about who the email comes from. So thank you to all of our participants for that. Um, it's going to come from do not reply at fiscal.ca.gov. That's fiscal.ca.gov. Do not reply. So that's who that will come from. Well, thank you for the attendees for helping out with that. Yes, you guys all rock. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so, uh, we, we are logged in. Uh, you may have seen me do that in the background. I went to that page and I typed in the username and password. So this is, this is a training account that we have set up. Um, you'll notice uh, there's a several options here. When I actually click on my profile, I've got uh, manage notifications. I, I mentioned that earlier when someone asked, how do we go back and manage our notifications? Um, we can even view our certification profile. That's of course, once we're certified. Um, if you actually want to start your, your certification, um, once you're logged in, you can click this main section for small business and disabled veteran business enterprise. And then there's a very large button here that says click here to get certified. Um, you click this. Now, it will actually take you to the page where you started off. I'm already certified as my company, so it is redirecting me. Um, to to my actual to my actual page, um, I should be able to pull up a screenshot of what that actually looks like. Let me go ahead and do that now. And since you're such a great multitasker, Matt, we have a question <laughs> here. Um, can I request a minimum dollar amount that I want to receive bid notices for? Um, interesting idea. No, you can't, unfortunately. Um, yeah, sorry that you can't actually do that, um, but that is an interesting concept and idea to do that for. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let's see if we can pull up this screenshot. All right. So you should be able to see this is a, a screenshot of the actual image. Um, uh, so after you click the uh, click here to get certified, after you click that icon, you'll see this screen. Um, up at the top, you've got some links about additional information for the certification. Um, and then right down here, you check off which certifications you would like to apply for. You notice there's the small business, small business for the purpose of public works, disabled veteran business enterprise, 
There are also two designations for a nonprofit veteran service agency and a nonprofit recognition. Um, those obviously only apply to nonprofits. Um, we're, we're, we don't really talk about um, those and engage with those because the, the community we're working with is for-profit institutions. So you check off whatever certifications you actually want to apply for and hit next. That will launch you into the actual certification uh, process where you'll be answering uh, various questions. Um, I'm, I'm not going to kind of go through step by step and show you what are all the questions uh, that you'll be answering in certification. That is a, a whole nother process that would, you know, takes a very long time uh, to, to walk through step by step. Um, as an individual, if you know, you know the answers to the questions, it can take you 20 minutes, uh, maybe 30 minutes. Um, I would say probably the most critical piece to have is copies of your tax returns to upload. If you've been around in business for, for more than a year, if you've been up in business for multiple years, then you include up to three years of tax returns, your most recent three years of tax returns. Um, any, any other questions? Yes, we do have an interesting one here. Um, for a corporation, when going through the process, it requires that you input the names of the owners, president, secretary, and treasurer, mm -hmm. but it's only one person. So should they enter in the same name for all three? Ah, um, so if it's one owner, owner who owns 100% of the company, uh, enter the name um, once and enter the primary role that they have and put 100% ownership. Perfect, and that's mm -hmm. all we have for now. Okay, um, so we only have a few minutes left uh, with our time today, and I actually want to turn it over to one of our hosts, uh, the main person behind putting all of these series of webinars together, uh, Jessica Biro from Caltrans District 5. Thank you, Matt, and thank you, Jolene. This webinar has been very informative, and I hope you've all taken something away from this. Um, I'd like to um, just thank you for having me. My name again is Jessica Biro. I am the Caltrans District 5 Small Business Liaison for, um, for the Department of Transportation. I'd like to ask you all to please submit um, in the chat box to Jolene your first and last name along with your email. I apologize, Jolene, in advance, you're gonna get a lot of <laughs> chats. Um, but that will help us track who's here today and help us follow up with some correspondence to you later. Um, for those of you watching this later on YouTube, um, we'll have some links at the end of this video recording. Um, next, Matt, could you bring up the um, website for the Office of Small Business and uh, DVBE Services? your your homepage. Sure, and um, to kind of show your businesses how you can actually get there, on the homepage of Cali Procure, you can click on this section for small businesses and DVBEs. And uh, there's a link here that's about doing business with the state. Uh, if you click that link, it will take you to this main resource page. Thank you. So, I'd like to just point out that there's a lot of resources here for business. You can see that under new to state contracting there, there is a register your business on Cali Procure link. You don't have to click it right now, but that will just really take you through what Matt just walked you through in this webinar. There's also some documents needed for small business and DVBE certification there below. And as an outreach specialist and a state agency liaison, I'd like to encourage you to continue in this, um, this series. So go ahead and click the attend an outreach event near you right there. Um, and then that'll take you to this page. And as you can see, our webinar series is featured on the DGS website. You are currently attending the May 8th webinar. The next webinar that I would recommend that you do do enroll in is the um, I'm certified, now what? Now, Matt just hovered over a May 14th link there. If you attended both yesterday and today, you could be sent, you could register for that and it will um, allow you a 10 minute one-on-one -on -one conference with either Matt or, who else are you doing that with, Matt? That's gonna be with my coworker, Jermaine. Okay, so you can have a 10 minute conference with him on the 14th if you have any more questions or of course, email the CustServe email. 
The I'm Certified Now What webinar on May 21st would be highly recommended to you as a newly certified business. The Department of Gen General Services will be providing an overview for that. You can click the register to attend button there and it will take you to our registration portal, which is listed on the Granite 101 website. Uh, CPM Logistics was kind enough to create this entire website and the registration portal. Thank you, Abigail and team, Rebecca and Michelle. That was fantastic. And when you get here, you're gonna register for whichever class you want to attend, which follows up on the information that Matt and Jolene have been sharing with you these past two days. So you would click the register button for whichever class you want. In this case, it's I'm certified now what? If you click that, um, just want to make sure that we get this information out there. If you're going to select multiple classes, you're going to want to complete your registration by selecting pay. Um, and then what that does is you'll be paying zero dollars, but it will generate an automatic message from the system saying, hey, yes, you are in fact enrolled. If you don't complete your registration on it by selecting pay um, for multiple classes, you won't be sent a Zoom link, right, Abigail? Um, Abigail has been really busy with sending a lot of Zoom links to people as they figure this <laughs> out throughout this webinar. Yeah, that little cart up there in the corner, you have to check out through that. And if you guys have any problems, just email Rebecca or myself and we're trying to keep it real time to get everybody into these webinars in advance of them starting. You got it. Um, Jolene, can you put in the chat box Abigail's email address? That would be fantastic. Yes, and then I definitely can. Thank you. And then um, for another website I'd like to share with you is if you go to Google and you Google the Caltrans Office of Civil Rights, you can Google it or you can use a search engine, it will take you to this website. And this website is extremely helpful for any small business who's interested in working with the California Department of Transportation or you know contractors in general. Um, there is a list of district small business liaisons there under business resources. I am one of them for, of course, Central California, uh, District 5. And then there is a few reports and resources here. Specifically, I'd like to point out the calendar of events, which the Office of Civil Rights is very happy to share there on the lower left-hand side right there. Thank you, Matt. And then there at the very lower part, there's some information on small business certification and links. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the Disadvantaged Business Enterprise certification coming up later this month. I believe it's May 29th. So the Office of Civil Rights will be covering that. Um, now, May, um, I'm going to go ahead and click the go up to work with work with Caltrans link at the top. Um, and that'll take you to another website, which, um, which is really our main page for working with our contractors um, on May 27th. I think it is. There's a, there's a navigating state websites, which really talks about the, the um, contractors corner and some of these links here. Matt, would you go ahead and go to Caltrans near me? Um, it'll pop up a uh, at the very top upper, uh, yep, there you go. And it'll pop up another page. And what that does is, is it shows you a map of California and how all of the California Department of Transportation districts are divided. For each district, there is a district small business liaison, such as myself or manager. On the far left side, you can see a list of uh, district districts. Um, it, there's links there that take you to the district websites. Um, and finally, I'd uh, like to thank our partners. We have the NorCal PTAC, Monterey Bay PTAC, who are both procurement uh, technical assistance centers, the Small Business Development Centers, Cal Poly, uh, SBDC, Cal Coastal, SBDC, the Economic Development Collaborative, the Associated General Contractors of California, uh, Granite Construction, the many chambers of commerce, including Solving and, and Santa Maria Chamber, and of course, the Caltrans Office of Civil Rights, the Department of General Services, who facilitated this uh, webinar, and of course, CPM Logistics for managing all the, the communication and registration. Thank you all. Jolene and Matt, back to you. All right, thank you so much, Jessica. And uh, as we wrap up this webinar, I just one more time want to give you the contact information for Jolene and myself. Uh, there's the general email, custservatedgs.ca.gov, and of course, uh, our main website over at DGS. Um, 
feel free to email us with any questions you have about this registration process or even about the certification process or any other questions about how to pursue contract opportunities with the state of California. We're happy to work with you one-on-one -on -one. Um, and even if necessary, connect you with a certification analyst to help make sure your registration and application get processed. Uh, we wanna thank you all so much for coming. It's been wonderful to have you here. Um, we hope you're able to join one, join one of the future sessions on kind of the next steps to contracting and what to do once you're certified. Thank you for joining. Yes, and just a reminder as well, this webinar will be posted on YouTube um, along with the webinar that we did yesterday. They go hand in hand. Um, we will be sending out links to those here in the very near future. So thank you very much to Caltrans for making that available for you guys. And again, any questions, just send them on over to cussserve at dgs.ca.gov. Thanks, I everyone. Just say oh. One more real quick thing. I'd like to introduce Abigail. She's here representing CPM Logistics. She's an excellent resource for um, contractors looking to um, uh, work the finer details of contracts. So she might be a, a resource for you as well. And we're going to be um, covering, um, you want to have a pitch for the May 28th webinar? Yeah, we have a pretty big conference with Granite, um, which will also include some small business resources. Uh, it's on the same website that you registered for these two day one and day two events. Um, so feel free to go in and register. If you have any issues with the registration, just you know shoot us an email and we'll get you in there. You can learn about bid, upcoming bid packages for the um, Highway 101 Santa Barbara to Carpinteria project. You're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Abigail, Matt, and Jolene. And thank you all for attending. Awesome. Bye, everyone.